finally it's like 70 degrees outside of course it also is 503 in the morning <laughs> Let me show you what we did today. The water catchment was hooked up to the water pump, which is about a $60 pump. It moves about 300 gallons, um, I guess about every half hour. And the hose goes in one end, comes out the other, and that main hose is connected to this 300 and I think it's 375 gallon but anyway um, and then just use your water hose and that's how you get pressure to be able to water the garden when you don't want to tote water over back and forth so that's what Ed did yesterday after of course he put together do you see the shaded area? Now we had already talked about making cattle panel um, greenhouse for later. This isn't a greenhouse. This is just literally landscape cloth, landscape fabric over arched cattle panels. Um, it's spread. He actually put a, uh, a stake in between here so that when the beans are climbing, they can still get uh, between these uh, wires and that way it doesn't hinder these climbing beans which are now just taking off because they're not dying of extreme heat exhaustion. Do beans get heat exhaustion? That's what I'm going to say, heat exhaustion. And it's had an effect over here because these things now get shade even though they're on the outside. And look at this guy. He wasted no time making his own way up. No time. Now, putting the Romas in the shade managed to save one of them. That other one, it looked like, where's, where's the dying one? It looks like this one. You see how shriveled and fried that one is? We're actually um, going to do some cutting and see if we can't save it. Just if you chop too much off at once, you you know put the plant in shock. So we can't trim it all at once. And this one is another one that was frying. So those three were frying, and now that one looks so good, just sitting in the shade for one day. These were doing decently enough. Um, they haven't dropped any fruit, but they haven't put on any more uh, flowers. Now, these Arkansas travelers, they look brown. This brown is actually um, wet, gray diatomaceous earth. I found out that the gray diatomaceous earth, because it's not as pretty looking, it's about a dollar a pound cheaper. <laughs> but these are Arkansas travelers. And I didn't know that many were coming up. In fact, I didn't know any were coming up through all this mulch. So I'm going to have to figure out how to convince them to come over here. But the Arkansas Travelers are made for heat and humidity. And they're putting on flowers like crazy. Speaking of flowers, this snake bean, which is really a type of squash or gourd, but you can eat it. It's got a baby. This uh, Marconi pepper was on the pallets out in the heat, and even though it's supposed to be able to withstand heat, it was just dropping off its flowers and dropping off its babies. And now it's got a flower again, and it's only been under the shade for two days. This one was up one day longer than the farther one out. 
And I don't know what to say about this fat, pitiful butter, butternut uh, squash. Now, everybody knows butternuts are a cold weather plant. Some of the leaves keep, you know, going down, but because they're so tangled, I can't pull them. So what I'm trying to do is slowly, you know, trim them down. Uh, the one that's doing bad anyway. The other two are doing great. In fact, they're dropping on the ground instead of going through the trellis, and I keep trying to pull them up, and they keep saying, nope, we do what we want to do. The volunteer melon has taken off. And I'm just honestly playing catch up at this point. And it smells awful out here because we had a 90 degree day yesterday, and yesterday morning was fish fertilizer day, so you can imagine. <laughs> I'm really surprised we don't have like raccoon prints. I actually see some, some drops of like maybe something came through looking. Um, you can see little scratches in the the mulch. These little holes right here in the mulch. It, um, chances are raccoon or possum did come through. Uh, something with small feet came through digging around trying to find the dead fish. <laughs> we harvested a lot of our squash and stuff yesterday. Um, I don't know, the day before, before we put the uh, diatomaceous earth on it. And uh, it appears. It's worked. Most of the uh, squash bugs that we saw, um, we did see three squash bugs. They were all juveniles, but we saw them. Um, so we went ahead and treated it with diatomaceous earth out here, and we don't see any. They were even on the beans. That, um, I think a stink bug was on the beans, and there was one of the really big squash that had squash bugs. Which, you know, some people are smarter than I am, and they, <laughs> they wait until the season's over for egg laying in late summer and fall. But by then, I've missed out on an opportune chance to get about 70 extra zucchini. So that's kind of what I'm going for, is I'm trying to can as much as possible. In fact, I'm canning today. Um, That's my goal anyway, I'm canning today. I see moths flying in. Those moths. There's a beetle. See, they say that these beetles don't climb, but they do. He's climbing on diatomaceous earth right now. Nice knowing you. There he is again, and I... He's running away. Why did he stop? He is scrambling. You know why he's running toward me? He thinks he's going to hide under me. He turned around. Hide! Hide from the diatomaceous earth! Mistake. Yeah, what you roll in? He's not gonna make it. We're not gonna watch a beetle dying. That takes up way too much of my editing time. <laughs> we are gonna look at these sunflowers and this one little pepper over here. They are eclipsing this pepper. But they are definitely moving, moving, moving. These guys over here, they're still putting on. Uh, you can't tell because there's a lot of diatomaceous earth out here. Like I said, the, the gray isn't as pretty, but it's just as effective. But one of the lemon pixies has finally popped out. Look at that. That is a lemon pixie sunflower, and we have never had a lemon pixie before, so this is pretty cool for me to see that. 
it's very bright yellow. I'll show you the difference in the lemon pixie and the dwarf sunflower. Ta-da! That is a big color difference. This one's almost orange in comparison.